constructed the world's longest tunnel. But the 34-mile-long railroad came at a heavy cost. Eight men lost their lives during the construction. They are celebrating in Switzerland, where the world's longest train tunnel just opened. It took 17 years to build, and thanks to the precision of the Swiss, the massive project came in on time and on budget. Well, if you just joined us, uh, you're, watching, uh, you're watching the opening ceremony of the world's longest and deepest rail tunnel under the Swiss Alps. It's uh, officially been opened. Uh, this spectacle um, uh, very much uh, showing how... And an impressive ceremony with a guest list that read like a meeting of the United Nations. When you celebrate science, perhaps it's best to not get carried away. The inauguration ceremony included some, uh, how should we put it, original choreography. It was quite bizarre. Aida <laughs> Lamy, do you associate uh, this kind of dancing with the inauguration of a tunnel? <laughs> I don't understand it's leaving art you speechless. enough. <laughs> it leaves me speechless. I get claustrophobic just thinking about that tunnel. <laughs> All right. We're, we're going to leave. Where was that? That was in the tunnel? That, I, yeah. I guess it was at Seems. one of the two entrances. Um, anyway, there you, there you have it. She joins us uh, now uh, watching uh, the ceremony. I was just saying there, Imogen, um, th this you know, very enjoyable spectacle with dancers and I presume some people that have taken part in the project as well shows just how immensely proud the Swiss are of this tunnel for so many reasons. Learning the number of deaths from this weekend's Sunset Music Festival at Raymond James Stadium could rise, with several people still fighting for their lives at area hospitals. The two-day Sunset Music Festival at Raymond James Stadium drawing a crowd of 30,000 over the weekend. At its end, two people would be dead of suspected drug overdoses. Tampa Fire Rescue says they took 57 people to the hospital. Right now, a drug believed to be sweeping the state is now potentially in our local neighborhoods. Police say the bath salt, known as Flaca, may have been in this man's system when he attacked a Brevard officer. When police say 41-year-old Kenneth Crowder ran around naked through this Melbourne neighborhood saying that he was God and performing lewd acts on a tree before getting tased by an officer and tased him twice. But we're told he didn't go down. In fact, he apparently pulled the probes from his torso and went after the officer, grabbing his badge and using it as a weapon. Well, that guy had superhuman strength. The 47-year-old man, Mark Mehoffer, made his first court appearance today, and our Jessica Miles was in the courtroom. And Jessica, it turned out to be a, a pretty dramatic court appearance. Yeah, unlike one that I have never seen, that's for sure. Mark reveals he heard God talking to him. And I was waiting for a phone call, and well, 
God told me to sit here and wait. But the truth is, God wrote about me 2,000 years ago. He wrote about me in a book. It says that I can do whatever I want. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are learning more about the man shot after a confrontation with police over the weekend. Donald found out last night his son was the guy police shot. He thinks he's Jesus Christ. He is very mad. He's been in Lakeview in the pavilion and he tells him he's Jesus and that they're going to kill Michael and he has to go eat with the disciples. My heart was pounded. Shelly Campbell was on the job at this convenience store in Starlight when a truck plowed into the front doors. She snapped this photo. Investigators say Aaron Cowan was behind the wheel. The mother of Cowan, who asked not to be identified, says there is much more to this story. She has been drug free, is in outpatient treatment, but this week she noticed changes in him. When I last was driving him to meetings on Wednesday morning, he was imagining that he was the second coming of Christ. He was not, he was not normal. Camden police have arrested a woman who they say ran her car into a Walmart store on purpose. The incident happened around 8.30 last night. Police say they arrived to find that Crystal Marshall had gotten out of her car and was screaming. An officer at the scene says that Marshall told him that the rapture was coming and that God told her to do it. Two people are dead and five others injured after a man goes on a stabbing spree in Massachusetts. The Massachusetts man who killed two people during a crosstown stabbing spree was hospitalized for suicidal thoughts just a day earlier, but was released despite his repeated claims that the devil was playing tricks on his mind. Suicida, eh, forzó su entrada al recinto de Leones, eh, se sacó la ropa, se desnudó y empezó a instigar a nuestros animales. A naked man jumped into their enclosure in what's thought to be a suicide attempt. It happened Saturday, May 21st at Santiago's Metropolitan Zoo. As a postcard moment at the Air Force Academy graduation ended with one of the F-16 fighter jets. We are following a developing story in Colorado where a Thunderbird jet crashed immediately after a flyover at a graduation ceremony where President Obama spoke. In an extraordinary coincidence, America's elite military acrobatic flying teams each suffered a crash today. A Navy Blue Angels F-18 fell near Nashville where the team was practicing for a show. The pilot was killed. Earlier today, an Air Force Thunderbird F-16 crashed after a flyby at the Air Force Academy graduation where the president was speaking. Foreign ministers from around the world convene in Paris to try and lay the groundwork for Israeli-Palestinian peace talks. But the two main players aren't even invited. France is hosting a conference in an attempt to revive the Israel-Palestinian peace process. It's considered one of the world's longest-running conflicts. This initiative has only one purpose, peace in the Middle East. Hollande made the comments during the Israeli-Palestinian peace meeting in the capital Paris. France is hosting the peace talks. This is an initial meeting between foreign ministers from a range of countries, including the United States.
this is officially a natural disaster. France's uh, president, François Hollande, uh, describing it as a uh, catastrophe naturelle. Tonight, parts of Paris and its suburbs are underwater. The Seine River is nearing its highest level in three decades. The Louvre Museum is closed. And we're now seeing that the, it, you know, this is re breaking records since the late 19th century. It scared me terribly. I was really panicked. I've never seen this in my life and it's shocking. Uh, shops, of course, also facing damage to their merchandise, their stock. Farmers are seeing their crops drown. A very uh, very interesting evening we're going to be diving into the brave new world of CRISPR and as you see uh, as you saw in that film CRISPR gives scientists the awesome power to tinker with the software of life for thousands of years humans have bred horses in much the same gradual way nature does but soon they could actually be designed in the lab along with other livestock plants and even humans. Because a new technology has made editing the genome almost as easy as using a word processor. This game-changing technology is one of the most powerful in the entire history of science, perhaps comparable to the splitting of the atom. The CRISPR revolution is already happening in research labs worldwide. For better or for worse, Every life on Earth will soon be affected by our ability to reprogram the software of life. I, I didn't want to let the evening go without uh, hitting the headlines that you made yesterday when you, uh, with your article in Science, talking about the Human Genome Project, right. Uh, you called for a, public, uh, a huge publicly and privately funded project to construct large plant and animal genomes including humans from scratch. And uh, you know, this was before the era of uh, easy gene editing that we have now. But about 10 to 12 percent you know, of these reproductive age people said that uh, if there were a test that would be uh, predictive of uh, superior intelligence or superior athletic ability, uh, in their children, well, they would want to have it. Um, and as we've you know, seen, for instance, with uh, consumer uh, genetics, that uh, people won't be denied in terms of the types of information that they'd like to uh, be able to achieve. But Once it's proven to be safe for particular ways, we're going to have to have a conversation about what the limits are for how we would use that technology. Um, there are still people who would you know, who I, like I said, have see that as a line in the sand that they we, we should never cross. But my belief is that we will and should cross it in some cases. There's a, a shorter timeline for testing those things, but how do you how do you regulate that? I mean, I don't think there's an answer. You can regulate against it, but you might not be able to prevent it. Yeah. yeah um Kyla Roberts spent a month in a coma at OU Medical Center after she and four other young people were ejected in an accident. He told me that he loves me and he's ready for me to come home, but not quite yet. And then I woke up here. But she does remember him. Green eyes and scraggly hair. And his scent. It smells like fresh clothes out of a dryer. I could see that. And his message. That he is real. God is real and heaven is real. She says Jesus has green eyes. Yes, she does. <laughs> she says he is got beautiful green eyes and she says that he saved her. Old in college more than 30 years ago is finally getting his diploma next week. It's something Daryl Burton truly never believed would happen and it almost didn't. He was 22 years old, enrolled in community college in 1984 when he was wrongfully convicted of murder. Burton was sent to the Missouri State Penitentiary for a crime he didn't commit. It was a place that I just described as hell on earth because it was an evil experience. Burton says the prison was full of the sounds of men screaming in pain, being raped or assaulted. 
He wrote in a letter to Jesus that he'd serve him if he got out of prison. Eventually, he got the help he needed to be released and declared innocent. I mean, I saw evil, you know, up close and personal. And so I knew that it'd have to be an opposite to this. 